welcome to the all-new Marvelicious Toys podcast, hosted by the astonishing Arnie, the mighty Marjorie, and Captain Justin. Nah, just Justin. Join us at MarveliciousToys.com to find thousands of pictures of the items reviewed, find links to our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages, and much more. Welcome to Marvelicious Toys, Volume 2, Issue 10. This is our Part 2 of San Diego Comic-Con coverage. This is Marjorie. This is Arnie. And this is Justin. And we've got a lot on this show. It's going to be a big show, going to be a great show. We're so glad everybody could join us. And we're going to be talking San Diego Comic-Con, yes. We're also going to be talking a little bit about the Avengers Endgame, D23, some Canadian legend reveals, and I mean that in more ways than one. <laughs> and also, talk about saving the Earth. And I don't mean in a superhero way, I mean in a don't use plastic bottles kind of way. Oh, I thought maybe Captain Planet got, you know, bought up by Marvel and was going to get a reboot. <laughs> He's the only one Disney hasn't bought yet. <laughs> but let's start with that. It was announced, and Justin, I'm looking to you because you work in retail packaging. Yes. Well, Hasbro has said they're going to be phasing out plastic from new toy and game packaging beginning in 2020. And that includes the non-fuel-based, oil-based plastics. Yeah, I would... To me, I've, I've looked at this comment and I've tried to read between the lines. I've tried to look up if there's been other comments. And I have found Hasbro did make a previous announcement something like this about a year ago. And they, it was on a blog about more sustainable, you know, vegetable-based plastics and stuff like that. So I don't know if they're moving that way. But, like, to put out a, a statement like this without any clarification as to what that means and what we can expect. Like, are we looking at just boxed figures in the future? I don't know. They said specifically, windows, pa window packaging will be gone. Plastic baggies will be gone. Rubber will be gone. Okay, but what you guys are missing is most important part of this. No elastic ties anymore. Well, we haven't had those in a while. They've been using those paper ones. Uh, so there's still some plastic ones I've had to cut off. Yeah, Hasbro did away with those a while ago. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what this means. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm hoping personally that it's more just leaning towards a more sustainable plastic type that's more recyclable, more green, more friendly, and not doing away with plastic altogether. Because yikes, that's gonna change in-box collecting and on-card collecting for forever. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, is that anyone who does carded collections or boxed collections, it is going to radically be different. And what they said was they're going to eliminate virtually all plastic by the end of 2022. So does that mean we're just going to get pictures of figures in a box? I mean, like, <laughs> oh, just in the packaging part. They're still going to be one of the biggest producers of plastic on the planet is what they're putting in the box. But what they said is, I mean, most parents take the box and immediately throw it away. And having opened wave after wave of legends myself, I do know one wave can fill an entire garbage bag. Yes, but we recycle. Yep, there is a lot of waste in the packaging, but yeah... I may, maybe they make some sort of, I don't know, collector agreement and keep things somewhat similar and do away with the things that are less collectible. But yeah, I guess it just goes back to what I said at the start of this is I wish this statement came with more clarification. It's one thing to, to put out a statement like this and then just let us run wild with speculation. But I think I think Hasbro needs to do the right thing and come out and and address this with the collectors and let us know what we can expect. They don't have to show us what the packaging is going to look like. Just give us a little more information so we know not to freak out right now. You just want to know that your figure is not going to come in like a brown paper sack. Yeah, I think that's fair. And they said that they are using the BioPet now, which is plant-based plastic, and they're going to be removing that as well. Yikes. So, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's I can see from the top down them like wanting to reduce their overall footprint because they do. Like I said, they most of the things they produce are made out of plastic anyway. So, you know, if they can get rid of some plastic in the packaging process, great. But clarify with us here in the near future. Let us know what that means. 
Yeah, I'm I'm really curious because what the biggest feedback I've gotten from listeners is paint apps. What does this mean? Because right now the 80th anniversary Captain America is hitting Walmarts and a lot of them are being left on pegs because the paint apps are not looking so good. And if you can't look at the figure in the bubble and see exactly what you're buying, what's that going to be? Plus, I know Hasbro says incidents of figure swapping are isolated and anecdotal. I'm sorry, would they like to come spend the day with me and we can tour some Walmarts? Everybody. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy the amount of figure swapping to the point that I sometimes get nervous buying Legends at retail if it's a figure like Wolverine, because I can't be sure that's the Wolverine I should be getting in that box. <laughs> There's just too many Wolverines that look exactly like that Wolverine. <laughs> Especially since they don't put the full body shots on the back anymore. It's usually just like, you know, waist up of the figure from now on. But <laughs> So if it's in a box, how's anybody going to know? <laughs> and would you ever know? I mean, I guess it kind of harkens back to... The days of vintage Star Wars, like every vehicle was in just the box with a big picture on it. I mean, you never knew what you were getting, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I do not know what this means for the future of, of collectibles, but I'll I'll be interested to see if they announce anything further here very soon. I've I've been looking all over the internet for clarification and it's just this comment and just kind of blowing in the breeze right now. Yeah, I'm very curious as well. And it does remind me. When the first time I interviewed Steve Sansweet, I asked him, do you open your toys? I mean, he was talking about getting a new FX lightsaber, and I'm like, do you open it? He's like, absolutely, I open it. How would I know it's not a brick inside of there if I don't open it? That's very true. If it has a window box, that's one thing, which is why I've always leaned towards keeping window box stuff sometimes packaged because it looks very nice as a display. But box boxes... You get kind of close to warehouse looks there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely ways around it, and hopefully they come up with some, you know, neat and innovative packaging ideas. But without without having a way to showcase the actual product, especially when you're talking action figures, I mean, that's, that's what has always sold the action figure is the item itself. From the very beginning when they were just placed on a bubble on a card all the way up to... I mean, think about what Toy Biz was doing. They were nothing but plastic. Those full clamshells you had to cut open to get into to to now where it's, you know, two pieces of plastic to keep it in there. Yeah, same with McFarlane toys. I remember cutting my fingers open on those many a times. I mean, the amount of plastic used in some of those blisters was insane. Hasbro was modest by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and... Talk about something else that happened since our last show. When last we left our listeners, was Arnie going to drive to Chicago for the We Love You 3000 tour for the release of Avengers Endgame? <laughs> the, uh, I did not. Well, that oh. was the special in-store events and Best Buys with the Russo brothers. Well, one Russo brother. Well, yeah, they said it was going to be Russo brothers. It was... Anthony Russo, Joe Russo. It was Joe. Oh, it was Joe? Uh -huh. Anthony did Minneapolis the next day. Yeah. And Sean Gunn did one in LA. And I just decided not to do it because only 100 people were getting like the lithograph and the autograph. And I decided that by the time I was about to hit the road for the three and a half hour drive, I was probably already too late. But there were exclusives for this best buy had a steel book target had a nice book package with a little booklet in it justin did you buy any physical media for this i did end up getting the steel book at best buy that that seems like to be the thing that i've been doing lately with these bigger releases is getting the steel book and i don't know if it was just me but this one felt easier to get than some of the past ones i just kind of sauntered into the store on the day and they had them sitting out so maybe i got lucky or maybe steel books are starting to either get produced in higher numbers or maybe the shine has kind of come off of them a little bit i think it's a combination of both because the standard steel books that like best buy does i think they're in more quantities than what they used to be because i think they realize people buy them they can make more money but i also think there's a hardcore collector segment which i'm seeing across from one of those guys they buy it from zavi and they have limited edition steelbooks that you can't get in the stores with different art and i think honestly the art 
for the Iron Man stuff and things was more attractive at Zavi than at Best Buy, but it really depends on the movie. I could walk in right now and still get Deadpool 2 Steelbook at Best Buy. I don't know why. But yet, Dark Phoenix has already pre-sold out on their website. I have to do a store pickup to get Dark Phoenix on Steelbook. See, that feels like a production number change to me, because come on, Deadpool 2 versus Dark Phoenix as far as popularity goes? Mm, I'm going to say more Deadpool 2 fans. Well, yes. It, yes, absolutely. It was the better movie. Although I will say that the we did find a product tie-in for Dark Phoenix. There was a brewery that made IPAs for Dark Phoenix, the movie. Boulevard Brewing Company. Oh, you're looking. Oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> they, made a co- they made a cosmic IPA for Dark Phoenix. All right. You know, the pumpkin spice of beers. Sure. Boulevard is one of the bigger microbrews, right? Boulevard wheat and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, this is called the Cosmic IPA. <laughs> and at the I Love You 3000 events, though, I thought there was going to be one lithograph that everybody got. It turns out they did city-specific lithographs. So what you're looking at there is Minneapolis, then Seattle... That was Chicago's. I like how they did the Chicago Theater. Uh, you got a San Francisco at Giant Stadium there. Yeah, I don't know why they went to the ball game. That seems weird, but they went to the Giants ball game, and I think they might have thrown out the first pitch, and they had a special Avengers night where you got like a Infinity Gauntlet desk chachi and a Hulkbuster bobblehead. <laughs> and then in Miami, you get graffiti, and in Los Angeles, it's Rocket Raccoon on the red carpet. Interesting that Rocket is the only non-Iron Man character, right? Well, the Russos aren't Iron Man, although they might like to think they are. Well, they're also not Rocket. <laughs> now, answer honestly, Arnie. If you had not already met the Russos and gotten their autographs, would would have you gone to this? Would you made it a point to get to this in Chicago? Hmm. Let me answer for him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you that people were lining up the night before. So at 8 p.m., which is a good 14 hours before Best Buy even opened, there were already like 30 to 40 people in line. Ah, uh, yeah. Stand, stand in the line overnight is a, something I think we might have aged out of at this point. Yeah, I, I haven't done it in a long time. I'll put it that way. Although I was planning to take a sleeping bag with me, but... If I hadn't gotten their autograph, I might have been more fervent about it. If both were there, if just one was there and I still hadn't gotten their autograph, I might have still passed. And looking at the lithograph, it does nothing for me. And the fact that there's a different one per city, the Chicago Theater, we've been there a few times. We saw Joel McHale there. It's iconic, though. All of them are iconic. All right. I guess that theater just isn't iconic to me. It is, though. And the other thing they were giving out is an exclusive button. And I'm really underwhelmed with it. (laughs) It's about nickel size with no graphics, just We Love You 3000. I don't have any regrets about not going, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, the lithos are kind of cool. I mean, not anything I'd want to stay outside all night for. And, you know, if it's easy to buy a set off of eBay, that's that's even better. But yeah, I mean, this button, uh, maybe if it was a coin, you know, a nice embossed coin with just this We Love You 3000 on it, that might get me more excited. But come on cheaped out a little bit of a two color button going on there yeah and i looked on ebay in case i i that's where i got most of these photos i was feeling like oh no what if i really missed out what if i totally screwed up and this is a great lithograph and a button i just cannot live without and that turned out not to be the case i was pretty cool with not having that button but Have you watched any of the bonus features on the movie yet? I haven't done that yet. I mean, it's, geez, just rewatching it is a a slog. I mean, it's an enjoyable movie. I love it. But it's, I mean, that's three hours out of your day. I don't know. I feel like I'd have to sit down just to watch the bonus features, you know? (laughs) It is a huge commitment. And that's, I think, one of the downfalls of the movie is it is so long. But once I start watching it, I don't realize how long it is. But there are some really good bonus features. And I'm not usually a bonus feature person. Yeah, I really liked what they did was they have fake endings. They talked about how they had some scripts that had fake scenes in them and specifically for Infinity War, but also for Endgame. And they decided to show us what they were. And they're like, it made absolutely no sense. It was horrible and we didn't go through with it very much, but we did 
have fake pages out there. And then, you know that YouTube thing I love, how it should have ended with the rudimentary art and it d parodies movies? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't even call it rudimentary. I think that's pretty darn good animation for a web series. Well, true. But they had that style of animation and they acted out the ends that you didn't, that were fake out there. Like, Gamora didn't die and... Oh, yeah. That does kind of feel like how it should have ended. <laughs> Thor didn't behead Thanos, just conked him on the head to knock him out. <laughs> nice little what if series. And it also included some nice retrospective stuff. There was a tribute to all the Avengers who died. We got to see a Robert Downey Jr. tribute, which included his original audition and camera tests and one for Chris Evans and one for Scarlett Johansson. I kept wondering, why those three? Why not one for Thor or anything? Then I realized, oh, it's the, the three who aren't going to be in any movie's future in the timeline. Although Black Widow has a movie coming out. Oh, huh? yeah. <laughs> and the deleted scenes, I was shocked. Those, if you went to the We Love You 3000 re-release, they had that scene that was partially animated of Hulk from the beginning of five years in the future where he's rescuing people from a fire. That is not on the disc. Oh. Oh, you're right. It's not. The Stan Lee tribute was, but that Hulk scene, you had to be in theaters if you wanted to see that. Oh, for now. I, I get the feeling they're going to finish the, the animation on that at some point and put it on some release here with the full phase four set that's eventually going to come out here at some point. Or maybe just on the D plus TV network. Sure. You know, I used to get in trouble if I had D plus. <laughs> <laughs> but the Russo's commentary and the features, I felt like the features actually were fairly short. There was a fun gag reel and some other stuff, but I was able to get through all the features with the exception of the commentary in under 90 minutes. I missed the days where the bonus features were hours and hours and hours long, but it's definitely a good video bundle for how they are made today, and I recommend picking up at least a digital copy. I mean, the digital version has the bonus features too. But moving from that to the convention that just happened over the weekend, and no, I'm not talking about Wizard because nobody's talking about <laughs> Wizard. <laughs> that was sad. Oh. <laughs> Is it is it just going downhill? I feel like every year the report on Wizard is that it's just not as good as it used to be. It's circling the drain even more. So I feel like that it's yeah. I didn't even go this year because I have sick. I have a very sick dog right now. But it, the pictures I saw, there's just nobody there, and it's just a crap show every time. Just between the staff not knowing their volunteers, which are apparently paid, they don't know anything. The VIP stuff was just out of control. It's pretty bad at a con where in less than 30 minutes wait, I can go up and see John Travolta, where I had him sign my Punisher Blu-ray. <laughs> but the con to be at, the con Hasbro was at, was Fan Expo Canada. And sadly, we did not... I've never been to Fan Expo Canada. I had tickets one year when Hayden Christensen was going to appear because he, you know... He does have a flappy head from being north of the border. Mm -hmm. but He's also full of lies because of that. Yes. <laughs> but he canceled, and so so did we, and I'd never been. But they had a Hasbro panel, and as is par for the course now, they have like a couple reveals per panel. And this one was, I don't know if you want to look at it as one reveal or six reveals, but it's an Alpha Flight Marvel Legends box set, and it's up for order now on Amazon. <laughs> oh, this one brings back some memories of some of the earlier days of Marvelicious when, Arnie, you were freaking out about, you know, getting these guys in three and three quarter inch. Yeah, I, rem I, I, I remember the question, and it wasn't really me freaking out, but our listeners were just, where's North Star? Oh my God, there's a conspiracy. They're not going to release North Star. <laughs> I think if I remember correctly, it was in between like a packaging change. It was like right at the end of the Marvel Universe line and going into that skinnier packaging that they went to. And we we were concerned that we weren't going to be able to at least complete those two, the brother and sister. But they eventually made good on it. But I think the headline here is that Puck Build-A-Figure is finally getting put out again 
for people who have been trying to get him. I mean, that figure I've seen go for $100 alone recently. Yeah, I was in one of the Marvel Legends Facebook groups and somebody, the moment this was announced, was like, I just paid $100 for it an hour ago. <laughs> Was that person you? No. I, if you recall, I actually have this Puck Build-A-Figure back from oh, the I, day. I remember it used to be sitting over here, didn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, with this and the hit monkey that they showed at Comic-Con, I one of these days I need to sit down and figure out if there's how many Build-A-Figures from the past 10, 15 years haven't been re-released in some form or another. Because it's... it's Great minds think alike. I think we should do that on the next show, because the only one that's coming to mind off the top of my head is Blob. Yeah, and that one, that's been quite a while back, and he's he's desperately needed. So, yeah, let's do that, because I think that list is getting shorter and shorter, and it'd be neat to kind of compile that and see see where we are with the Build the Figure series now. Yeah, maybe I can deliver it to Hasbro at New York Comic Con and be like, all right, here's the last ones. <laughs> and they'll whip it out of their back pocket and like, yep. <laughs> but this is a good figure set. I mean, I don't recall, other than Puck, getting any of these in the Hasbro era of Marvel Legends. No, this is, yeah, this is an all new set of, I mean, of characters anyway. I, I don't know about the parts. I mean, it looks, you know, like any standard Marvel Legends type of stuff using parts to make other other characters and stuff, but good use of it. This is the type of thing that strikes me as if Toys R Us was still around, it would be a Toys R Us exclusive. But since it's not, we're getting it on Amazon. Yeah, we did get a lot of these six packs. We had the X-Men wave where I could never find good paint, and we had the a force box set this feels in line with that i was a little bit astonished at the price i mean it's one box so when i go to amazon and check out i'm like Hold on, don't tell me i'm guessing 150 oh. see it's 110 it's 109 yeah 110 yeah. Huh? i mean puck's tiny and all but well five regular size figures at 20 bucks each and then a 10 dollar puck or a 10 dollar puck you to those who spent a hundred dollars on him I expected it to be a little bit more because it was an Amazon exclusive. Yeah, that's what I had to realize is it's actually a really reasonable price for five figures for 110 in especially in a nice box like this. But my initial reaction was, ooh, a punch in the wallet. But I got to remember for the MCU 10th anniversary and the Marvel 80th anniversary, it's not uncommon to see two packs for 50 or $60. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly the way you got to look at it, too. It's like, oh, and some of those three packs were $80. I mean, the the Doctor Strange, Thanos, and I think it was Iron Man in that pack. That was, I think that was $70 for that three pack. Mm -hmm. So six figures, even if you want to go five and a half for 110 is pretty good. Plus, I love how Amazon has the pre-order price guarantee. And it says it's not shipping till December 1st. I'm crossing my fingers for that pre-order price guarantee to hit Black Friday and get a sale. Yep. <laughs> Although, Dabeed over at Marvel Toy News had a good idea, and I went ahead and did it. Be sure to mark that you're getting this as a gift, mm -hmm. because boxes like this, they will just slap a label on it and ship it to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Always do that with, with Amazon. I mean, I don't think it costs much more, if anything, to say it's a gift, right? It costs nothing more to say it's a gift. I wasn't sure if that meant they'd double box it. So I went ahead and said, and wrap it for $3. <laughs> nice. You give a little present to yourself. Exactly. So it's going to come in that awful organza bag that barely fits. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. But, I, you know, I may be a little slow on the uptake, but it took me a little while to realize they announced Alpha Flight at the Canadian convention and alpha flights the canadian x-men mm -hmm. there's a little bit of uh you know synergy going on there makes makes a lot of sense and it's the perfect place to announce it maybe we need to start putting that on the on the list of things to do try it out at least one time yeah we're we've it's definitely one to think about going to we do a lot of cons but it is one of the bigger ones mm -hmm. and toronto is fun and driving distance. Yes. Justin, we could just pick you up. We could have a big road trip. There you go. The, the other thing I think is they timed this well. Now people really will want that Sasquatch Build-A-Figure, right? Yep, you almost got to have them. If you want the full Alpha Flight team, they, well, here's this group, but got to throw in Sasquatch, and then you really have quite a display piece. 
Yeah, I mean, that was, that was pretty quick filling out a team, and we've been getting pieces and parts here and there, and all of a sudden they dropped the rest of them in a full box set, and it's like, there you go, you got another full team ready to roll out. But the convention Marjorie and I have been discussing going to hmm. is D23. Daryl, when, as you can see here, <laughs> he takes the best photos. He does. The D23 Expo, we were discussing it. This is, I believe, the fifth one. They started in 09 and do every other year. And this year was a pretty big year for D23 and Marvel. Yeah, I mean, especially with, you know, Disney Plus getting ready to launch here in a couple months. They they had a lot of stuff that they needed to announce. I mean, we got some teasers and some announcements at Comic-Con, but they, they didn't give us too much, you know, information at the time. So D23 rolls around and let's unroll the whole carpeting here. Well, they also had an exclusive Hot Toys Captain America from Endgame. And did you were you able to get your hands on one? Daryl went for us, and they were sold out. Oh. Uh, and so I eBayed one. <laughs> now, it hurt. It hurt a lot. I could have gone to D23. I'll just say that much. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard it was a disaster, so. Yeah, but it, it, I could have gone to D23. Gone to the convention, done nothing but get this figure, and flown home the same day. Racked up some frequent flyer miles there. Although I guess I get eBay reward bucks this way. Here, here's the kicker: is some of this figure is going to be a regular release, but he comes with a number of exclusive accessories and packaging, and he's coming with the Tesseract and Loki scepter and some lightning bits to put on Thor's hammer. I'm sorry, it's Captain America's hammer now. <laughs> <laughs> he returned it. Meh. Plus the broken shield, the full shield. Yeah, this one was needed. <sighs> so which do you know what the regular release might be? I mean, is he still going to be kind of this battle-worn, dirtier version or maybe a cleaner version with some of these same accessories? Because, I mean, I'm seeing, like you said, some of these accessories feel like they are things that have definitely come with other characters. I mean, the scepter's got to have had to have come with Loki and... Tess Tesseract sitting there. Mm -hmm. Thor's hammer obviously came with him. So I mean, basically, what we're getting here is Cap's broken shield with with some packings that you might already have. Don't take it away from me, Justin. Okay. The regular version <laughs> does look a bit cleaner. It has a different assembled shield that has a bunch of dirt on it compared to this one that looks cleaner from the photo that they released. And the regular version comes with an unmasked head as well. All right. So it's, you know, some people could live without it, and then there's Arnie and Marjorie. Yeah, I mean, it makes a good exclusive, don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it really does. But, you know, for somebody like me who's a little more casual with what I get on these hot toys, I can look at this and be like, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to blow a vacation over it, but but yeah, it's cool. If it wasn't Captain America, I probably wouldn't have turned a blind eye to him buying it. I have a weak spot for Captain America. <laughs> and his ass. Everyone has a weak spot for that ass, right? <laughs> also announced something that was just a matter of time, but I'm surprised they haven't even finished building Star Wars land, and now they've announced Avengers land. It's Avengers campus. <laughs> oh, I go to college there? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes kind of more sense. Ad Ad Adventure land sounds so much like adventure land. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's, we knew this had to happen, right? I mean, you can't have a, a property like Marvel and not do something major with it at, at the parks, right? Well, because of the agreement they signed with Universal, they'll be doing it at Disneyland, but not Disney World. They're doing it in Disney Paris, but not Disney World. Yeah, for now. I mean, I think eventually... They'll buy Universal. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It does look rather cool from the concept art. I mean, with the Avengers compound there, and I like how it's sparsely populated with people and only, like, th five children in the photo. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that's what's going to really happen. <laughs> <laughs> and Daryl got some pictures of the presentation where they showed some other stuff, like a Spider-Man area. I really want to know how they're going to recreate this concept art, though, with all the superheroes fighting. I mean, that's just going to be a hell of a show. <laughs> I mean, I think it's cool and I definitely want to visit. I just I, I hope Marvel 
has the legs they think it. I mean, this feels almost like five years too late. Like we should have been already, you know, getting an update to the campus because it's been built for so long. However, a lot of people while these movies were popular until I would say started with Civil War, you started to get like the really like people who aren't into Marvel all of a sudden are like Marvel's their life or they think it's their life. I'm not sure which, but I mean, if if my dad and stepmom know who these characters are, that's my barometer for it's crossed over the line and gone too far. Well, the reason I really bring this up on this show is we're a collecting show, and while you could argue you collect experiences and collect memories, I don't believe that BS, but what I do collect are Marvel Legends, and based on what they're doing at Galaxy's Edge with the exclusive Star Wars Black Series figures, I have a feeling when this launches, there's going to be some exclusive Legends and other stuff. I mean, there's going to be a lot of stuff. I mean... Go to Galaxy's Edge, there's Coke bottles and popcorn tins and everything you can imagine, but I'm thinking stuff that we already collect, not just souvenir bric-a-brac. Yeah, and the the question is, is you know, how hard are they going to make these to get? I mean, right now, the Star Wars stuff is, is somewhat gettable, you know? I mean, in years past, you've been able to get it on the apps and stuff. They've changed that recently, and I'm still not sure how, how that's going to work out. But yeah, I mean, if they start putting out exclusives that you can only get there or variants that you can only get there that's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of a nightmare yeah i'm i'm looking at how they did black series i mean they did three four packs at launch but they haven't done any more since so if they keep it to that kind of a pace you know 12 every couple years maybe that wouldn't be so bad but it is just another exclusive headache and i feel really bad for all the floridians who will live in florida and not be able to buy those toys i don't feel so bad for them they live in florida (laughs) have you ever driven in florida i feel bad for them for that too yeah (laughs) the other thing though is i just really want to rob one of their hotel rooms oh my god i want to live there i'm thinking that we should just redo our entire bedroom and do this I'm game. First of all, I love the bed that's like a platform bed. Yes, I I love that. But those sheets or that duvet and the pillow shams, I have to have it. I wouldn't even complain about the mural about Spider-Man above the bed. I, you know, lobby for Captain America, but... Look at that. That's a framed photo. That's like a framed 10 by 6. (laughs) It's like a billboard. (laughs) <laughs> what would be good is like at night like the buildings twinkled Ooh, glow in the dark iridescent uh-huh. ink i have to say i mean yes i would totally steal that comforter and pillow and they can bill me <laughs> but i also was inspired though i am redoing my collecting room seeing this mural there i looked hot topic sells murals now it's not framed i think it's a wallpaper type thing although you could put a frame around this like they did here there's a spider-man one and a couple star wars ones and another marvel one and they are 10 by 6 they call them the chair rail murals it's supposed to go above your chair rail i guess in your kitchen (laughs) but no i think that's just to tell you where the placement on the wall is suggested but i thought those looking at this wouldn't that be damn impressive to come into a collecting room and just see, like, that marking the area as Marvel? Yeah, I mean, that is pretty sweet, you know? I would definitely like to have something like that. The Spider-Man in the middle of it is a little off-putting, because it's a little too on the nose, but I still dig the idea. Well, I mean, if you didn't have Spider-Man, you'd just have a comic strip of New York City. No, I'm saying he just seems a little too big, and maybe a little too focal, being, you know backlit by the moon there i feel like he could be a little more subtly placed in there but that's that's just a little tiny artistic critique but i i dig the overall idea i agree i would just make this a bedroom though if we could find that furniture i like the colors and just nice they also announced some new programming though if you weren't sure about your disney plus subscription now they've announced ms marvel Moon Knight and She-Hulk will be coming as part of Phase 4 on television. All right. I still have a big question mark over all these. Not about, like, you know, are they going to be good or what are they going to be? Just I have that question mark. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the obvious question. But my question is, is am I going to care? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm, I'm obviously going to be getting the service, but like, is this going to be too much stuff for me to even care about? Am I only going to be able to like grab onto one or two of these to stick with? I'll be honest. I'm only down with one of them, but I had no interest in Wanda and Vision. I really didn't care to explore their relationship. I don't know about you. But I'm excited because they announced Kat Denning is going to be part of it. And I like Kat Denning. Yeah, I don't know how she's going to fit in there, but all right. And I thought you'd be excited for the Loki one. Here's the thing. Let me tell you about Loki. Loki's like salt, okay? Like a little bit goes a long way. So if you just like pour on Loki on your on your viewing experience, I think you're going to find that it's a little bit much. Yeah, it depends on how they do it. Maybe they'll make Loki more like a quantum leap where it's not necessarily Scott Bakula every week, but it's Loki in somebody else's body. So we don't have to have that much of actual Loki on screen. Who knows? I think it's going to be Loki vision, but here's my feeling. She-Hulk, I'm excited for it if they do the She-Hulk that was in the comics for 30 years. The big green lawyer. If they do the very early or the very recent, more savage She-Hulk, I'm not so down just because I think it's derivative. Ms. Marvel, I don't think that show will be aimed at me. I know the comics with her aren't aimed at me. They are aimed at younger readers, and I just have never been able to get into her as a character. Moon Knight, that could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, all of these could be interesting, and until we start seeing some stuff, it's the way I feel about a lot of stuff with Marvel, is until they start to hype me up, I have a hard time getting hyped, you know? So it's, a, a logo and the, the list of characters isn't enough to get me chomping at the bit yet. So in two months from now, when we see a trailer for one of these shows, talk to me again, because I might be like, oh my god, WandaVision looks so awesome! But right now, it's just some logos, and I, I, I can't get too geeked up yet. They did reveal and give out some posters at the event. And these are really, really hard to get things right now. But they had one for the What If series. It is going to be animated. There's one that Marjorie really, really went gaga for there. I had to have the Captain America worthy print. I mean, come on, look at that. That's just, and that's that Ryan, I'm going to butcher his last name. Minor Ding. Meandering? Me I don't know. <laughs> Me Ryan Meandering. I'm just going to pretend he meanders. He does the concept art for the movies. Like, he's the one who draws up their suits and everything. And if you see him at a con, he has fabulous prints of his concept art that are just amazing. Oh, my God. I, I, I spend too much at his booth every time because he always gets new stuff. But I had to have that one. And then Black Widow movie poster, Eternals movie poster... But Justin, you said something that just sparked a memory. No, but Marjorie, I do dig that Captain America poster. I mean, it's like the split second before Molnir reaches his hand. And that's yeah. that's that's awesome because like that's that's a moment frozen in time where it's like we're not sure the first time we're seeing this movie what's happening. And then as soon as it comes to his hand, everybody in the audience is just like <gasps> He is worthy. I may have screamed every <laughs> single time I've seen it. The, still to this day. The artist said that's a scene he envisioned that they never did of Cap picking up Mjolnir and wondering if he could. So that's him reaching for it on the ground before he's sure he can pick it up. Oh, well, now it's way less special. <laughs> <laughs> it's still really cool. It is cool. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it in my mind that it's, it's Mjolnir right before it reaches him. I'm not going to let that ruin it. And I needed the Black Widow poster, and my wife is very good at Facebook groups and was able to score me one signed. Yeah, I did get that. So I got that, and then uh, I did get that cat print thanks to a very lovely gentleman I met in a Disney group. So, all right, it is here. Justin, if you see, they did also hand out a WandaVision poster. You said maybe they'll show you something from WandaVision and you'll get really hyped. Does this poster get you really hyped? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Check it out. <laughs> it's like, how, leave it to Vision. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny, and I kind of get what they're doing here, but yeah, not, not enough to get me hyped yet. But check out the shadow. That's kind of cool. They've got the classic Scarlet Witch kind of look going on in the shadow there. Mm, and Vision next to her with the cape. Yep. A little harder to make that out, but yeah. 
And if you look at the television, it's glowing red. My personal guess is we're getting a House of M style thing where Wanda changes reality to bring Vision back to life. Oh, well, yeah. And the right half of the picture is in black and white, too. So, the, yeah, you're right. There is some sort of manipulation going on here. I did read something about a scene set in the 50s, which is where I really wonder how Kat Denning's going to fit in. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, any confirmation that she's her, her character from Thor, or maybe they're just bringing her back as a new character in the Marvel Universe? They've never done that in the Marvel Universe until D23 when they announced that the actress who played Minerva on Captain Marvel is playing an Eternal in the Eternals. Maybe they felt she was under enough makeup they could pull that off, but they've never recycled a human before. Hmm. I'm guessing she's got to be Darcy. I mean, she, Kat Denning is too... She's not an actress who fades in the background. She's no. not one you just go, oh, who's that again? <laughs> True. And I know it's not technically MCU, but I mean, come on. I mean, Chris Evans was the Human Torch before he was Captain America. So, But I mean, it is <laughs> not the MCU. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They also did announce a new movie, Black Panther 2, May 2022. Electric Boogaloo. But that's a long wait. That's four years. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Between movies. Yeah. It's three movies. It's three years from now. Well, two and a half years from now. But still, that's that's a ways out. Which means Guardians 3 is after that, most likely. Yeah, because James Gunn is doing Suicide Squad. Guardians 3... It could be May 2023. Wow. Because that does feel like a May film that would be huge. Yeah, that's not an end of summer movie. Yeah, that's that's the big temple beginning of summer movie. But there's n they're not ready to reveal the title or anything of Black Panther 2. They've merely acknowledged its existence. And I am glad Ryan Coogler said the wait is so they could get it perfectly right. Nice. Give them a little more time for some of the special effects this time, because that was the that was the one lacking part of that movie is the special effects felt rushed in places. Oh my god, yes, they were. The train scene was terrible. And then the final bit of movie news: Spider Man. We hardly knew ye. Uh... That was a moment of silence <laughs> for Spider Man in the MCU. I've seen some people really get like vicious about this. I feel like I just need to like hey. Do you guys need some Xanax or something? Because people are like off the hook crazy. I talk of boycotts. I'm like, okay, yeah, you go ahead and boycott Marvel. Go for it. They should just all listen to Taylor Swift. You need to calm down. <laughs> no one should listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> I mean, I hate to root for the big corporation that already owns everything. But like at the end of the day, I'm a fan of Marvel stuff. And I'm sorry, Spider-Man belongs in the Marvel world, not in his own little offshoot thing. And not little, but not separated from the rest of what's going on in Marvel. So I'm kind of hoping Disney somehow pulls this out. But like the prospect of more Spider-Man movies with no association with what's going on in Disney's universe really doesn't have me excited. It just feels like where we were five years ago. Well, I, I agree with you and... Maybe it's just a hardball negotiating tactic, but it does sound like this might be Disney's fault when they went in and said, yeah, we want 50% now. Yeah. And, I mean, like you said, might be hardball negotiation. And maybe that is Sony's way of, you know, trying to change the, the perception because usually we don't get that type of information. So who knows what's going on behind closed doors or what the overall plan might be. But I don't think this is over just yet. Well, what is over, but we're going to spend a little time talking about it, San Diego Comic-Con. And we talked all about the Hasbro stuff on our last show. Now, let's talk about everything else. And I have to say that before we get to this, it was kind of a weird year because they really didn't have anything to show that was movie tie-in. I do feel what you're saying, Marjorie. It, there was no, like, major, like, Avengers presence around the Marvel booth and pervading, like, all the licensees or anything. It just kind of felt like, and here's our Marvel stuff in every one of these booths that we usually go to. Yeah, there was nothing really to draw anybody in on any of this. It's, now, if you're deep into the comics, absolutely, I think that there's stuff for you. But there was no big push for anything. Mezco didn't have a whole lot new. I included this shot here because it's basically everything we've seen at every other show for quite a while now. 
I keep waiting for that Ghost Rider. I keep waiting for that Lockjaw. That Lockjaw was displayed since before Inhumans was a TV series. Yeah, that's been out there for quite a few years that they keep showing that. And it felt kind of weird. I kept walking by that booth throughout the entire show to just to see if they were getting ready to pop something new in there. But it just it stayed the same the whole time. There are a couple things that they had. Morbius. Morbius had a big year this year. I, If you watched the live interview with Diamond Select Toys we did... I asked, is it because of the movie? And it's, it's got to be because of the movie, right? The Morbius movie coming out in 2020 that Mezco's doing a 112 figure in 2020 and Diamond's doing a statue. Yeah, I mean, you don't just pull Morbius out of nowhere just to, to throw him out there. I mean, it could be coincidental, but it's it's got to be some sort of like, hey, this movie's coming out. This character's now on the list of things that are going to be relevant coming up. So go ahead and start soliciting him. It is worth noting, Marvel gets 100% of the toy sales, even for the Sony property movies. They didn't used to for the Fox movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's always a Spider-Man wave. Also, did we know about the green Iron Fist before in his nice pajamas? It doesn't look familiar to me, but these are the ones that I generally stay away from. The ones that are humans wearing nothing but spandex. They look like Migos. <laughs> I mean, very nicely done, Migos. Don't get me yeah. wrong, I always love what Mezco's does in this scale. But yeah, th these are the ones that I am less likely to jump on. But yeah, I mean, it, look, it looks cool. Got a little bit of a Riddler feel. <laughs> I see what you mean, though. You sometimes complain about how small threads can be, seams can be. Here, the texture of that fabric is so clearly big on him. It's almost like corduroy. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Fist is out there. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of chafing. I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, it must be sweltering in the summer months, too. <laughs> then they had a couple X-Men out. I think we've seen both of them before, but I was struck by their diorama backgrounds and how I felt like they went over to Diamond Select Toys and were like, Oh, can we borrow some of those? <laughs> I'll make you some of those. Jeez. That's like, give me some cardboard and a Sharpie. I'll, I'll have you a few in a minute. I mean, compare that to Morbius's background that looks like it's right out of a Dracula movie or Iron Fist with the brick wall there. I understand. They're trying to do Danger Room, and Danger Room only looks so many ways, and that's what Diamond was too. But come on, give me a buzzsaw coming out of the wall or something. <laughs> Right. <laughs> now, hopping over to Kotobukiya, they had an unannounced exclusive that I was not expecting. That's what unannounced usually means. Yeah, you weren't expecting it. Fair point. Thank you. <laughs> this, this was so unexpected, we bought it twice. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little miscommunication. <laughs> I did my wifely duties. I picked it up. What can I say? I thought you hadn't, and so I was helping you out and picked you it up. You told me to. <laughs> <laughs> well, the regular release of this was the Phoenix in green, so the exclusive Dark Phoenix in red. And it's a nice statue. I mean, I definitely prefer the red to the green outfit, and it fits very well in their animated series. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, and it, it makes for a good exclusive, but to my eye, the the red just kind of gets lost against that, that flame background a little bit, but where the green pops a little bit more. Yeah, I can see that. The other thing, and I didn't realize it was such a short time, but this is the 10th anniversary of the Bishojo line. 10 years ago in 2009, they came out with that Black Widow. Wow, we've come a long way, TNA. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever looked at anime statues, Justin? I was going to say, we, we talk a lot about the Bishojo line and stuff like that and how like other properties are a little more risque than, than the... Marvel line, and you can kind of see in this picture here <laughs> that we've got going on what we're talking about sometimes because, yeah, the, and these are even some of the more tame ones that they have on display. Yeah, I was just looking, look at the very first one they did, and look at the most recent one they've done. I think there is a huge difference there. Well, for one thing, they have lost the facial likeness that they were having, like with the I don't want to say anime, but it's kind of an anime face. It's anime, yeah. With the big eyes, because the shoujo means pretty girl, and it's a style in Japan. And if you look up, like, the Entertainment Earth catalog or their website and look at the shoujo and look at the other lines, 
that Squirrel Girl looks nothing like it. And no. I don't even know why Squirrel Girl's of a shoujo. I sometimes wonder how negotiations go with Marvel. The other one they've done, Domino. I kind of like the outfit. I really like the stuffed Deadpool she comes with. And the base. They've been kind of having plain bases for a little while. I like that she's on a Domino. Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool one. I, I do like the, the accessories and stuff that come there. And they've announced their next one, which will be Dark Phoenix. They haven't done a Phoenix in a very long time. They did the three Phoenix Phoenixes in, I believe, 2010. And those are crazy high to get on eBay now. So they're revisiting it in the larger scale that they're doing now because they grew to, I believe, one seventh scale. And they even had the model on display. And yes, it is certainly more realistic proportions than what the Bashojos were 10 years ago, but it still looks like a really good sculpt. Yeah, and I mean, look at look at all the flames going on there. I mean, that's, I mean, even just with the, the statue we looked at just a few slides ago, like, this one's got a lot of detail in it, like all those little wisps of fire coming off of it. And the face, it looks like it has more sculpting detail than the artifacts did, and that's usually not the case with a Bishojo. But Kotobuki, I think they're in a period of reinvention. We talked about it at Toy Fair, how they have their now artifacts premiere line. They're limited to a thousand pieces. They're much more expensive. They're higher quality paints and things, and I wasn't quite sure what to think of them. I especially didn't like Hulk in the woods. <laughs> Hulk taking a crap. <laughs> Why so constipated? And then Need prunes! <laughs> <laughs> then, I wasn't, again, I mentioned the She-Hulk I like is more Jennifer Walters. They're coming out with the more savage She-Hulk in this line, and I was like, hmm... I don't know how I feel about it, and for 190, I feel like passing on it. I have a question. Was this version of She-Hulk, like, stacked? Yeah, I don't think that stacked. Okay, because this is, like, super stacked. Maybe it's, like, the half tank top shirt, but she is, like, all boobs. <laughs> yeah, and usually that's the first thing to go when women get into major bodybuilding, you know? Oh, I know. <laughs> yes, they're flat-chested. <laughs> it's, it's the jean shorts that are throwing me. They are a little bit weird because they're they're kind of like, I guess you'd expect her to wear like maybe a little shorter, not quite Daisy Dukes, but a little bit longer. And instead, they're like the ones baby wore from Dirty Dancing. <laughs> it just, I mean, the, the, the wife beater and the, the cut off jean short, it just kind of feels like trailer park shield or something. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> <laughs> this is the look when the power goes out again. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the scale of these here. I, w I was feeling pretty tepid on this line, but they had a lot of new ones out there. First of all, they have a new Black Panther coming in 2020. Look at the detail on that, though. The metallic paint, the, what would you call that? The texturing of his outfit? The texturing of his outfit. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like cap scales, but maybe the more like a Teflon type of pattern type of thing. And then a Black Widow coming. Again, look at the texture of the leather there and the shading of the hair, the coloring of the batons. I have a problem with this one. Her hair is terrible. It looks like a low-flow shower head. Doesn't look a little lifeless. Yeah, it's just like hair. Yeah, they need to prell it up a little bit before they release it. Yeah, there's like no motion. There's like a little bit on the ends, just like nothing. It's very static and it just looks like low-flow hair. It's caught in the rain, Black Widow. Yes. They have a Doctor Strange coming out, which, Justin, you and I were kind of marveling at his base and the sort of iridescence to his cape. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on. I mean, just the sculpt, like, even looking at these pictures, I had to remind myself, yeah, no, that's sculpted. That's not a fabric shirt that they have on him there. I mean, the texture in there, like we were just talking about, is incredibly detailed. Then we've talked about Cosmic Ghost Rider last week. They're doing one of him, too. <laughs> okay, now, I usually love everything Kodo does, but this looks like his head was preserved in amber, like in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I just feel like I got this head for a quarter out of the, the gumball machine on the way out of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah! It's, the, it's that it's like a, a dome and not like a round, like a space helmet, I guess. is. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're obviously being true to the, the comic inspiration and stuff. And it, I mean, the sculpt looks incredible. It's just, I have not bought in on this character yet. And it just, for for just 
the simple look of it, it just it, it comes off really goofy sci-fi to me. You know, I wonder if these are the kind of like deep dive figures that work better at Marvel Legends because it's like a twenty dollar price point versus whatever the two hundred dollars this is gonna be. Yeah, one eighty ish, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean it's an obscure character, right? Yeah, we're gonna find out. It'll be at a forty dollar price point with the <laughs> with a motorcycle with a moon wheel here not too not too long from now. But I was really complaining about the price point of this new line. And Justin, you pointed something out. They had on display the Doctor Strange they did in the old line for eighty dollars, and then the new Doctor Strange that they did for two hundred dollars, and it, it's night and day different. But one is a potato and one's not. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're asking for more money just because the cost of goods have gone up. It's like they're putting that back into the product. So, I mean, if you're a fan of the line, at least you're getting more quality out of it now. But the one on the left is clearly Benedict Cumberbatch, and the other one is not. That's okay, but take a look. The one on the right looks more human. No, that's how Benedict Cumberbatch looks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he looks like a baked potato or an alien <laughs> okay but look at the outfit look at the weaving look at the coloring oh i'm not gonna deny the outfit is better look at the metallic gold on the new one's hands this picture made me realize they might not be overpriced after all yeah i mean it's, it's the difference between looking at what hasbro was doing five six years ago with the legends and what we're getting now when when the face paint does work you know (laughs) some of the some of the captain america's aside like just the night and day difference in the the face painting apps that they've got going on that yeah it's this is a market improvement i i really think what they're doing here is i i'm not gonna say it's worth the extra 120 dollars because i've never been in on this line but if i was i would be glad to see that they're putting it towards better development and better final products yeah that's the thing that kills me is so much more expensive But the quality is there, but I'm going to have to be very picky choosy on this line. But what I am choosing and just going all in on, and I don't believe they're going to be as expensive, they're doing Spider-Verse artifacts plus statues. And I am just so happy that they're doing that with Spider-Man Noir and Miles Morales. And getting the the good animated style with the, you know, kind of anamorphic proportions in there, which I think works well in this line. What I found odd is they're actually including, like, a dotted shadow behind the figure. Yeah, what what a cool way to bring to life that, that really cool animated movie in, in a static figure. I mean, from, from afar you can't really tell, but then when you step up to it and you kind of move your head back and forth, it's like, oh, there's a silhouette of his shape right behind him that's kind of got that comic book dot pattern to it. My only complaints about this, I've interviewed a number of statue makers... And one thing they all say is the statue should look good no matter how you choose to rotate it on your display. Sideways, front ways, you know, at a 45 degree angle. I do feel because of this background, there's one way and one way only you're going to pose this figure. And I don't mean pose because it's not posable, but one way you're going to face the statue. That shadow will be against a wall. Yeah, I mean, fair enough, but I, I I like it as an addition, and I wonder if it's a permanent part or if you can choose to display it without it. I do wonder, yeah, it might be something you can remove from the base. And the Spider-Man noir sculpt, it, I mean, it's just so detailed with the Spider-Man webbing on the mask and things. So, while I'm like, eh, Space Ghost Rider, here, I'm all in. And I do wonder what they're going to be doing next. There's a tease Marvel Studios commemorative series where they're going to do iconic scenes and characters from the 23 films. Oh boy. (laughs) Now this could be cool. I mean, like maybe we're getting a little bit of a preview with it, what they're doing from the spider verse, you know, a a nice backdrop that feels like it's from the movie. Maybe they're going to get really specific. Maybe we're going to have a scene with Loki standing in Stark tower as a nice backdrop. I could be down for some of that stuff. I mean, we've talked about it in the past where it's cool if you get like a, a comic book cover in the background and then get figures posed in front of it or a statue of that art in front of it. Maybe they're going to make this all in one type of piece here. I'm very anxious to see. I, I do wonder if it's just going to be movie style figures that will be with the detail that they're doing in their current Artifacts Plus Premium. But... They said more updates coming soon. Maybe New York. They usually are at New York Comic Con. 
Now, let's let's talk Hot Toys. All right, so that's the show, because, I mean, Hot Toys was just ungodly prolific in there. By my count, they had 54 six-scale figures on display. Oh, my God. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Are we going to go through these, like, micro-machine style? Yes. Sweet! All right. All right, from the Avengers, Iron Man Mark IV, diecast. From Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Stan Lee. He is shipping now. And Gamora. And Gamora comes with Baby Groot. Black Panther from Infinity War. Power Pose Hulkbuster. He has shipped. Infinity War Doctor Strange. Iron Spider-Man. Teenage Groot or Adolescent Groot. Thor. Drax. He's on an Avengers base that, that could just as easily be a Guardians of the Galaxy Drax. Star-Lord. I love that it's got like the little like Qbert discs that he jumped on when fighting Thanos. Mm-hmm. War Machine. And then... The deluxe Iron Man with the blades and all of the accessories. From Captain Marvel, Jan Rog. Green outfit Captain Marvel. Then from Endgame, Mantis. Shuri. Now, she's on an Endgame base, but the, the sign says Black Panther movie. But she's on an Endgame base, so I put her here. Team Suit, War Machine. They're going to kill me with these Team Suits. Uh, team Suit, Stark. Team Suit, Cap, with Mjolnir. Oh, that's when he's going to return it, then. Yeah. Now, there is the deluxe Hawkeye Ronin 2-pack, or you just get Ronin. Cap, the regular release, not the exclusive of D23. Cap, uh, from Endgame, in his... America's ass outfit. So basically, they're remaking that figure. Endgame Black Widow, with the blonde hair at the end. Endgame Ant-Man. Endgame Wasp. Endgame Iron Man Mark 85. Endgame Rescue. Thanos. End of movie... With the power gauntlet, Tony Stark. I love this one. <laughs> Iron Patriot War Machine from the end of the movie with Rocket on his shoulder. Captain Marvel, although that's on an Endgame one. I don't remember her ever doing anything in that movie with that hairstyle. <laughs> Here's Nebula. Hulk with the power gauntlet. Home suit Spider-Man for Far From Home. That one went up for order today. It's kind of a retool of the earlier one and a much nicer retool at that. Night Monkey. A light-up Spider-Man with the pod. So, like, he gets his own Hall of Armor from the Stark Jet. Black suit, Far From Home. Then from the video games, Venom Pool, <laughs> War Machine Punisher, Velocity Suit Spider-Man, Advanced Suit Spider-Man, Scarlet Spider, this thing sold out in a blink. Oh, yeah. Negative Suit Spider-Man, Spider-Punk. <laughs> <laughs> then in the concept... We had the Neon Tech Iron Man that was for sale at New York Comic Con, the Neon Tech Iron Man that was for sale at San Diego Comic Con, and giving me nightmares, where the hell is this one going to be? Neon Tech War Machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be on your eBay watch list, is where it's going to be. <laughs> and then a diorama, they're having the, in the movie masterpiece series, there is your quantum time travel machine. Ooh. So Venom Pool, this is the one that really caught my eye most. And I know it's silly, but I like Venom Pool here. It, I mean, it is cool. And I got to say, they had so many awesome things on display. And if I could buy them all, I would. But if I could only pick one, and I think that's kind of where I'm coming down on Hot Toys this year, is that maybe I'll get myself one. I think I have to get that War Machine. That just looks like the epitome of Hot Toys. It's pretty badass. But that Venom Pool is, is a close second. So the metallic, are you talking the Iron Patriot War Machine? Yeah, the end of the end movie version in his red, white, and blue. And I'm guessing if they have Rocket on his shoulder, maybe it's a two-pack. Yeah, that is that is sweet. That is also one of the my favorite ones that they put out there that is just absolutely gorgeous. And the die cast on it, you know, I did vote in the Toy of the Year awards that the Iron Patriot diecast they did for Iron Man 3 should win best six scale figure, but the Iron Man Mark 42 beat it out. I don't think it should have. Here, I have a feeling the whatever year they shipped this, this should win that year. Yeah. I mean, it's got the bulk without getting into that like Iron Monger, you know, Hulkbuster size, but it's going to be a really big heavy diecast piece and I think it's going to be worth every penny. I'm guessing it's going to be 
upwards of 500 when it comes out. But yeah, that's I think that's a must have out of the hot toys lineup. The only reason I think this could be sub 500 is looking at the photos. I think the guns will be plastic. The main body will be die cast. But it also doesn't look like there's a lot of movable flaps on those guns like they've done for other ones. If they went a little more basic on the guns, it might shave $100 off that price. I could. I guess I'm bracing myself for a $500 price point and then being happier than anything below that. The I talked about the Scarlet Spider that sold out so fast, but I love his accessories of the coffee cup. Probably stole it off the set of Game of Thrones. Pizza box. Old school camera. <laughs> And they managed to get some really cool detailing into that otherwise somewhat boring, you know, outfit with the the textures on the the red part of his outfit. Negative suit Spider-Man is just a cool concept. I they got to keep him sub 200, right? I mean, you're getting a little silly here. <laughs> this is where you think it's silly. Okay. <laughs> we found the line. Yeah, I am hmm. But I am glad in a way. The game license is letting them do comic figures that I don't think they have the license to do, maybe because of Hasbro, but getting the Scarlet Spider and now getting the Civil War comic book Iron Spider-Man there and take a look at all the hinges on those legs. Yeah, being Hot Toys, I would assume they're all articulated, which would be awesome, but yeah, that's that's the classic, really cool-looking Iron Spider-Man. Go to the next one. They're all double-jointed legs. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say just one? <laughs> I was about to say this one's just so cool looking with the metallic red. They had on display some quarter scale figures. I think Marjorie started to weep for her credit cards at that moment. Oh, they're not my credit cards. My credit cards. Yes. The quarter scale Spider-Man for Far From Home. I saw it and I gotta say. It didn't do anything for me. The Spider-Man costume in that movie is just kind of takes a backseat anyway. You know, I mean, it's it's one of the more plain versions of the, the costume that we've seen. I, I would say in all the movies throughout the years, it just it hasn't done anything for me on screen. It The Hasbro Marvel Legends version didn't do anything for me. It's just a boring outfit. And we were talking about how the Mezcos look like Migos. I couldn't help but think when I saw cloth on the 12 inch figure, how much it just kind of looked like Spider Man Ken doll. <laughs> yeah. Bunching up in the crotch there a little bit. I mean, I understand that's how cloth would move. You're right, Justin. If this was the Tobey Maguire suit, I might have had a different feeling. But here, I was just left really underwhelmed by it. I mean, I know it comes with a load of accessories, different eyes. The base also being a vulture wing, the fact that it was bent up at 90 degrees, it actually made it feel tiny instead of grandiose. Yeah, that should be way bigger. You're right. Yeah, kind of kind of a disappointment. But I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's completely accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Some things just do not translate into into hot toys. Yeah, I just think that when they do the quarter scale Iron Man with the plastic, it works so much better because it isn't soft goods. Because they had the Mark II out there, as well as, I believe, the Mark IV. Or is that the Mark III? It's the three. It comes with an Ironmonger arm. I lost the thread on the Marks long ago. And then they also are entering a new space. What do you think of this, Justin? The Hall of Armor with basically three-inch, three-and-three-quarter-inch figures. Yeah, I dig it. Do we know the price point on these? Yes. Can I guess $30? Am I being naive guessing $30? I mean, they look like they're packaged for basic retail, so I'm guessing they're going to try to get like a somewhat of a decent price point on them, but it is Hot Toys. I, I want to say 50 that. but that packaging just does not... I would have a hard time paying $50 for something that came in that package on the card back like that. Are you guys saying 50 each, 30 each, or what are you saying? Yes, I'm saying each. Yeah, I was guessing 30 each. Okay. If we were playing the prices right, Justin, you would win. It's... 235 for a set of seven, so that's about 33 each. Oh, all right. And these do light up. I mean, the Hall of Armor is illuminated. Are they articulated, or are they just meant to be like little figures and stay in the Hall of Armor? Little figures that stay in the Hall of Armor. And the figures are smaller than Hasbro. The each Iron Man is 3.14 inches with the Hall of Armor itself being five inches. But 
I like this as, dare I say, I mean, it's still $235, but a budget way of doing this, if you can't get, I mean, to do this in Hot Toys, the set of Hall of Armor was going to be $800 alone, and then, say, $300 average for each of the suits in there. But maybe you don't even need the Hot Toys version, and that's not something you have space for, it's something you desire, this would be perfect. And if you can buy them individually, that seems like that would be something to hit that right sweet spot for de- desk tchotchkes. They are only selling them as a set through Sideshow. Well, then, all right. Just forget that. But I'm <laughs> guessing other places might sell them individually. Yeah, I mean, maybe selling them as a set right now is kind of a test of waters. And if it does well, maybe they'll sell them individually and, you know, introduce more here and there. And eventually you'll have a full haul of armor. I for sure, though, when I walked out, I, I'm I'm like, well, they're never going to release this. This is just something they're showing. Because remember the helicarrier that they showed, that tiny little helicarrier that was like smaller than a 12-inch figure, and it had like the little ant size Quinjets on it? Yeah. I felt like, oh, here's another scale that will never be released. No, they put it up for order next week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it is, it's cool and it's tempting. If they were articulated, I might be clicking pre-order as we speak, but I don't know. I, I, I'll let you get them and I'll come check them out and then I'll make my mind up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're assuming I'm getting this. <laughs> I think it's a safe assumption. Well, Hot Toys is taking up more and more of Sideshow's booth, so... We don't have a whole lot to talk about Sideshow, except really how sad their six-inch figures look by, or six-scale figures look by comparison. Yeah, it feels like if it was a competition, the the race is over, right? I mean, I really want to like that comic Red Skull, but his head looks like Play-Doh, and his outfit looks kind of generic. And you're seeing the seams, aren't you? Yeah, I'm seeing the seams. Magneto has a nice base, and I like the wire cloth cape, but, you know, I've seen some of those TNS figures that kind of look better. Mm-hmm. And other stuff on display, they did have their full-scale busts. I have to say that Venom is gorgeous. Yeah, if I, if I, if I had a movie theater, I would be into those type of things, but right now I'm running out of space, and I don't know where I'd put a... A huge Venom bust. (laughs) He's actually really gruesome because his teeth and he's got like slobber on it. It's just not good. But it's great. Okay. I mean. (laughs) It is. I mean. I get it. I mean, it's unlike anything they've done, but I will say that it's really gruesome. And I stand by the fact Venom, a little bit much at times. Yeah, you don't want to get too close. Just looking at some of the statues that stood out to me. This one just went up for pre-order. It's a J. Scott Campbell Spider-Man with Mary Jane based on one of his comic covers from Renew Your Vows. I wonder if this is going to go on sale, though. I'm surprised at the number of exclusive J. Scott Campbell style Spider-Mans that are on sale. They did not pre-sell out. Hmm. Should be shipping pretty soon. An Adi Granov based She-Hulk. And that's way overdue. The She-Hulk that they did 10 years ago goes for over a thousand on eBay. You need what? to get She-Hulk back out there. This is the She-Hulk that I hope they do the series about right here. Yeah, I mean, she's got her bathing suit on. She got out of those ratty old trailer <laughs> clothes and ready for the pageant. You, you could easily do a repaint of this and put her in the Fantastic Four outfit she wore too. Oh yeah. There was one that was announced before Comic-Con that I didn't get until I saw it in person. Really? Kidpool. <laughs> Kid pool in a kid pool. <laughs> I thought it was Deadpool in a bathtub, but now I get it. It's kid pool in a kid pool with a Deadpool duck and his little lightsabers and a fing fang foom floaty. <laughs> and a Deadpool duck. It just so many layers of self-referential. It's incredible. The, I just like the Easter eggs in it. And hey, I got to say, it's not easy to sculpt something to make it look like it's blow up cheap plastic. And they did a great job doing that. That pool actually looks like it's an inflatable plastic pool. Then there was one. I pre-ordered this quite a while ago, but I was hoping it was as nice as I wanted it to be. This juggernaut, it's actually so much nicer than I ever hoped. (laughs) It is so gorgeous. The detail on it, the size of it. I mean, 
I got the exclusive that comes with Kitty Pride kind of coming out of the ground. But take a look at that face. Look at the detail. Look at the treads on his boots. I was going to say, I remember standing there for about five minutes just in awe over the sculpt on the bottom of his damn boots. <laughs> it was. I, I think you were there, Arnie. That you, me, and Daryl will just kind of stand there like, wow, look at the detail in his treads. And I loved the fact that he tore up the floor and you see a subfloor there. Just that level of detail. Yeah, it's a very, very nice piece. And, you know, when, when you get into this level of detail, you get close and you see the difference in the fabric and his clothing and the difference in the skin texture, uh, you know, contrasted with the metal of his helmet. I mean, your pictures are great, but it just does not do it justice to what you see in person. Yeah, it just can't. You just can't feel the scale of it. But it is nice. And the Colossus that I think goes with it so you can have him. He's on a different floor, but you could have these two going at it. He is equally big. He doesn't have the detail because, you know, he's Colossus. He doesn't need that kind of texturing, but nice metallic. Perhaps my favorite one is the new Gambit they have coming out, though. They haven't done him in a long time. That Gambit's so hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's that from? Uh, was it Zoolander? Zoolander. Ah. <laughs> Gambit statue's so hot right now. Yeah, I don't know why Gambit's getting a resurgence. Is he going to be in something? Well, he is in comics. Well, I know he's in the comics. But yeah, I mean, everybody, Hasbro just did this version, and um, there's a... Wasn't there uh, Kodo? Yeah. Yeah. But Bezco never yeah, actually so... came out with him. No, but they, they're showing him. <laughs> <laughs> and one of those other ones, like, uh, it's not it's not figure arts, it's one of those other ones like that that has a gambit in this. Like Mafex or something? Yeah, Mafex, I believe, has got one like this. Sideshow's also debuted a new line that, hmm, I just can't get behind it. One third scale busts. They had on display Wolverine, Thanos, and of course, Deadpool. I am not a big fan of busts. I don't know. They just, I don't, not a big fan of them. I can't articulate it. Yeah, I mean, they're busts with arms and stuff, so that's cool. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. If I'm gonna, if I'm going to be spending a good chunk of change for a non-articulated thing... Give me the full thing. I want to go full statue. Yeah, I agree. Especially when you have Diamond putting out statues. They're smaller. They're maybe six scale or so, but you can get a full statue for 150. I think these busts might be fine at 100, but Thanos is 325. Wolverine is 250 up for order now. Deadpool, it's TBD. Again, good detail, but I really don't like the bases. The fact that they look like they're greek replicas or something yeah i'm not really sure what they're doing they feel somewhat uninspired for the bases i mean i guess it's better than just kind of the the rounded standard base that we used to get back in the day from general giant and stuff like that but yeah bust in general just don't do it for me like marjorie said then looking also sideshow i feel is becoming more of a distributor than a manufacturer anymore and iron studios is one of their main things that they distribute I feel like Sideshow's gotten out of the movie-style premium format figures and is just letting Iron Studios do this now. I agree, because it seems to be all about Iron Studios anymore, and when's the last time that we got one from Sideshow? I think it might have been Hulk from Age of Ultron. Ooh, that's a long time ago. Yeah, that's been a few years. Meanwhile, Iron Studios, for Civil War, they did the Falcon and Bucky that were so gorgeous, Unfortunately, the price of these is rather exorbitant. The Captain America Deluxe that you see here was, I believe, $1,100. Yikes. Ouch. And it's the same scale as premium format. It fits in very nicely, but you're, you're paying a pretty penny for it. Yeah, and for that penny that you're paying, I, I would like to see better hair sculpting, especially when it comes to Thor. Like, that's, it's very apparent, even in person, it was like, uh, the sculpt is kind of there, but the paint isn't. It's just something really fakey feeling about the hair on these things. The beard on Thor actually looks like it's like melted plastic on him. Like, there's no definition. I don't know if it's paint, sculpting, but I think his suit is fantastic, but his hair is not. You're right. See, of the three of these, I love the Captain America, and it may be because there's no hair. That Thor, to me, I think his face is lacking detail for a statue of this price. I would want to see, like we saw with the Kotobukiya level of detail, and I don't see that here. 
Nope. And it's also out of character for him. Like, <laughs> I don't think he was this serious throughout the entire movie. He kind of was at the very end when he's like, it's a trap. Oh, I don't much care. Yeah. <laughs> for a split second. <laughs> I think that's the scene they're kind of going for. What I do like is Iron Studios doing their one-tenth scale stuff. You could really set up a nice diorama. God knows they had one set up in the booth with almost recreating the entire endgame battle at about 125 per statue. That's not easy to set up, Arnie. That's a lot of Avengers now. <laughs> Once I figure out how to do the magic portals, I'm set. That's yeah, just some cellophane and lights. And they're doing more comic-based stuff. I was surprised to see comic-based X-Men, a Professor X, a Mystique, and then they showed at D23 a giant sentinel that these all go around, actually a set of three sentinels. Oh, that's cool. And a giant sentinel can go with almost anything because sentinels kind of, you know, a little bit vague in the scale. So even if you just get sentinels and use it as a display for your, your Hasbro Legends and stuff, that's that could work. What surprised me also is they're now doing quarter scale comic based as they have a daredevil on display. And I don't know if that's a bad angle or what, but that is a very unflattering picture of that statue. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's like old man face and it looks like his head is like way too large for the body. It's wide angle close up. Doesn't do anybody any favors. I The more impressive thing here is the base in the background. I mean, we've got like half of a stained glass window from a church and like some nice angelic statues that are broken up and underfoot there. It's 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 a nice piece. I just wish I was more into Daredevil. Yeah, I'm I'm glad I'm not more into Daredevil because that's a thousand dollars saved. Yeah, I, you know, matter of perspective, right? <laughs> Why are you cocking your head at me? Because I see the number of Iron <laughs> Studios boxes that arrive at the house, and I never questioned how much they were. Only th only four have arrived at the house, and three of them were one-tenth scale. Okay, I just remember seeing a bunch of Iron Studios boxes. I did get one this week of the quarter-scale Iron Spider-Man. I just could not not, if that makes sense. Although, I again, in their one-tenth scale, I might be ODing on Spider-Verse, but man, these are awesome! Okay, I think these are really cute, but I think that the longevity of having these on display is going to be wearing thin. You know what I mean? Because they're very different. They're very loud. They have a lot of stuff you don't see traditionally in a statue. And I'm sure that these are expensive. I don't know how much they are. Probably around 100 If they were like half that, they would make awesome things for kids, like statues for the slightly older kids who like this movie. But this is for adults. I understand, but I just, I think this might be a bit much. Yeah, I mean, right now, because there's only one movie, I could see, like, maybe trying to get into this line and feeling like you could be complete, but it scares me. Like, okay, so we get all of the ones they have now. I'm finished. Oh, that second movie was awesome, and they introduced 10 new awesome versions of Spider-Man <laughs> yep. that I have to get. See, that's the thing, yeah. <laughs> and I guess with Iron Studios, here's the thing. Looking at what they've done with the endgame stuff, if these sell... Oh, yeah, here's Dr. Octopus, and here's that giant, tiny head kingpin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I do like that it's an option out there. I do like that there's somebody supporting this line and this look for this movie, because it, it, it's unique. I mean, a, a lot of these statues that we look at, it's like, yeah, it's a difference in scale, a little bit difference in quality here and there. But this stands out as something new and different. I, I'm glad that somebody's tackling it. I kind of think that the success of Spider-Verse caught everyone by surprise. And I don't think anyone expected it to be the big hit it was. Marvel certainly didn't. Sony did. Now heading over to Mondo. Usually when I'm talking about Mondo, I'm talking about posters. But Marjorie... Ah! Modoc. Sorry, Modoc Tiki's. I was really excited because there's not much Modoc that ever comes out. And I may have let out a scream on the floor Sunday morning at San Diego when I saw these. Yeah, I think I heard the scream that sounded exactly like that from across the floor. <laughs> it was a Howard <laughs> Dean scream. <laughs> As in it killed her chances to win presidency. <laughs> it did. I mean, come on, they're not going to elect me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> if ever there was a character that was made to be tiki mugged, it's got to be Modoc, right? He's shaped like a tiki mug. I have to have these. I, there's two different colors. I have to have them. Arnie's been stalking the Mondo site for when they go on sale because you have to fight the Tiki collectors to get this now. Well, it may help that because of my poster collecting, not only does every tweet, Mondo tweet, come up as a text message on my phone, I'm also on their newsletter literally five times. <laughs> literally. 
five times. <laughs> so every time they send out a newsletter, which is about literally three times a week. Okay, Chris Traeger. <laughs> then I look to see if it's about tiki mugs. They also did have on display ones that were she was less excited about, but I kind of like that Thanos. Yeah, see, I was not impressed with either one of those. I didn't even know that was Venom until I looked at the tag. The Venom one does nothing for me, but that Thanos reminds me of the Tiki Idol from the Brady Bunch episode. I think it's been a long time since you've seen that episode. <laughs> I mean, it, it lends itself. It does feel very Tiki-ish. It's no MODOK, but it, it feels in feels right in line, more so than the Venom. The Venom feels like it, it's like a weird moon boot or something. <laughs> you have the Venom. It reminds me of those really hideous coffee mugs that Think Geek sent for free, and I wouldn't even keep for free. <laughs> no, do you mean Loot Crate? Yeah, Loot Crate. I'm sorry. Yeah, Loot Crate would send like ridiculous mugs that like you drank out of it, you were risking like poking your eye out. Now, briefly, I want to talk about FX collectibles. Very briefly, because God knows they haven't shipped anything in a while. I'm a little bit nervous about this company. Not going out of business, but just about them being consumer-friendly prop maker in their Star Wars panel. They said that they were going to change their business model on certain items. If you want their Star Destroyer or some of their other replicas, they are going to be built to order at a price of 12000 ish mm. Yeah, it's just higher ILM at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that they're incredibly accurate, but they're just not looking at edition sizes in the hundreds anymore they're looking at edition sizes in the tens at that price you like actually have like a legitimate shot of getting a, a real screen used prop no three four times that price i mean it depends <laughs> on what prop you want i could have gotten Arno sure. zola's papers for a few hundred but if you want something cool <laughs> you're looking at forty thousand up <laughs> So it's a bargain if you look at it that way. I am enamored with this purple-haired woman that is in the dead center of that frame that I did not notice until this second. <laughs> she just looks so happy. That looks like a wig. <laughs> it may be a wig. I don't care. She just looks so happy. <laughs> <laughs> she just matches the entire ambiance of what's going on, like all the purple lighting in the background. <laughs> She's very color-coordinated. But yes, I would love for them to come out with the Ragnarok Thor helmet. I would be all over that. I'd like them to ship me the Iron Man I put the deposit down on first, though. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of shipping, I'm, I gotta say, Diamond Select, I, I love Diamond Select, you guys know that, but part of my heart breaks because there's so much cool they're showing off, like that giant quarter-scale Hulkbuster statue, or the feeling almost as giant six-scale Hulkbuster statue, or in their $50 gallery line, Corvus Glaive, and Proxima Midnight, why do I mention those four? All canceled. Ouch. Hmm. When I talked to Zach about the Hulkbusters at Diamond Select, he was like, yeah, we just weren't able to make it for the price we needed to make it for to sell it. So, so it was just abandoned. And I'm kind of sad because I really was looking forward to getting the Black Order in statue format. And the gallery statues from Diamond at 50 a piece is a great way to do that. I mean, you get the whole Black Order for 250 As compared to if Iron Studios did it, you get the whole Black Order for the price of a Nissan. <laughs> so the things that they show, I'd say 95% of them come out, but there's, there's some I, I wonder if we'll see. And I only know that because I'd pre-ordered all four of those items from Entertainment Earth and got cancellation emails. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe they just didn't see enough orders. I mean, that's got to be what it comes down to. I mean, if, if something was popular, they would they would do it. Or if, if it was popular and they found out that they couldn't do it for one reason or another, I'm sure they would announce that and come up with a new way to do it. Just the fact that they got canceled just means that maybe interest wasn't there i emailed zach last week i have not yet heard a reply so that's a no comment from diamond select on the cancellations but one thing that is shipping now that psylocke figure thank god it comes with an alternate head mm -hmm. you don't like her looking like that or she looks like she smelled something horrifying it looks like our frenchie just did a drive-by on her yeah <laughs> Did you pick this one up? How, how Where are you with Diamond Selects these days, Justin? I know you used to be big into them. Yeah, you know, they've kind of fallen to the wayside for me. I mean, I just, 
you know, I'm still into them when they make sense, but just with Hasbro, like, really kicking up the output over these last couple years, it's it's become less and less of a focus for me, and I only pick up the ones that I absolutely feel like I have to have, like, something that feels special, so, like, you know, last year when Thanos came out, I got the versions of Thanos, and if they come out with a really cool-looking Hulk, I'll grab those, but the human characters, I've been kind of staying away from. Yeah, this one, I mean, I'm, I've, get, I picked her up again. The alternate head was a lifesaver. If that had been the only head, I, I probably would have skipped this figure out. To be completely <laughs> honest, that's just. And then they have the Avengers uh, Mark eighty five coming with Iron Man. They do really good armored suits, I think, with the paint job and whatnot. You said Hulk's. Where do you feel about Professor Hulk in his team suit with his nano gauntlet? Yeah, see, this is one that I feel like I will have to pick up because I don't think we're going to get this in Hasbro's line, or if we do, it'll be a couple years from now. And I think this one will scale nicely with, with Hasbro stuff, so that's exactly the type of thing I'm looking for nowadays from Diamond. But they do make that in the Titan Hero series, Justin. <laughs> yeah. And they even have one of those with electronics. I think I did see that. And then finally, Sandman. The thing I love about the Sandman is just the sheer number of accessories he's coming with. Yeah, he he's outscaled mostly for Marvel Legends, but I do think he'll pose really nicely with the Marvel Select Spider-Mans they've made. Yeah, nice classic comic book version, too. I mean, that's that's a cool piece all on its own. They also had a new line announced there, animated X-Men bus. X-Men 92 cartoon getting a lot of love these days. I'm really anti-bust these days, but I like these. First of all, the price is right at 60 a piece compared to 200 plus a piece I've seen for General Giant stuff. And being that animated series, it's really hitting me in a sweet spot, especially that Jean Grey. Well, see, I was going to say, I do like what they're doing here. I like the 3D representation of a 2D cell shaded style. I think that's cool. And where it works, it works. But where, to me, it's not working is on Jean Grey's face. Like, it feels overly drawn. You know, there's almost <laughs> too much eyeliner going on. <laughs> she looks like Evil Lynn from He-Man movie. Yeah, but, you know, it's it's working on Cyclops and Wolverine really well. Yeah, I mean, they can't resist that. I do like, you're right, the face, I'm seeing the lines on the nose, that might be a little much, and the sheer flat color on the front could be a little much i really like the bases though i think that really works like they're i don't know they're all kind of kitty pride coming out of the ground but it's a nice unobtrusive base that doesn't bother me yeah i mean it's a cool line and it's a cool concept but i am taking bets will the angel statue based off of the alex ross art ever see the light of day it is a big statue it is going to be I believe around $400 or so. It looks just like the art come to life. Man, I've always thought that mutant baby was creepy, though. Ah, yikes. Put your fingers over the the head, and what you almost got is like a St. Jude's Hospital thing going on here. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh So I'm not wrong. No, you are right. <laughs> so you're saying it's a Shriner helping children. <laughs> well, in the arms of Angel. <laughs> and looking at their premieres, I, again, hope this comes out. I love this Professor Hulk statue. They don't go for 100% the movie accuracy look like Iron Studios. They also cost a third the amount. And I like this one in its six scale. That... Hob got that green goblin really is an amazing piece. I love the photography. I love the his base with the flames. He's in the premiere line for 150. Same with this Hella. Look at that helmet. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, this one is very good. I think well, the only thing I don't like is that her suit kind of looks like one of those neon tech Iron Man suits. I could see that. But again, price point, right? I but, still love that helmet, but it also just, it just screams, I'm going to break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, in 10 years, finding one of these intact will be a trick. <laughs> Lots of little pieces to snap off. And finally, they're continuing the animated style st st statues. They've got a 
little Deadpool with his like Charlie Brown lemonade stand where Lucy gave the the psych the psychiatric advice. He's there one million per hit. <laughs> Very cute. And with that, that wraps up our Comic Con coverage. Sorry, Justin, you le- you you left, and so this was Marjorie and I saying peace out to the con and uh, some security lady behind us thinking we're weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think he captured the feel of a Sunday at Comic Con, though. Kind of not not super sparse, but like you can tell that it's wrapping up, and this feels like the end of the con type of picture. So so good job of capturing the essence of the last day and the sheer ex- exhaustion in my eyes and the look of not having shaved since Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good time as always, and you know. It's always fun to recap what we went over and kind of get a mental breakdown of how much money is going to be flying out of our wallets over the next year or so based on what we just saw. But so it's always fun to, to reminisce. I can't believe it's been a month already. It doesn't seem like it's been a month ago that Comic-Con wrapped up. It doesn't seem like we're just over a month away from New York Comic-Con. Uh. It's going to be the first weekend of October this year. So it's, what, 32 days away? Oof. Well, rest up and get ready. In between, I think we should get together and review some figures. What do you guys say? Maybe some 80th anniversary stuff. Yeah, review some figures and maybe we'll work on that what build of figures still need to be re-released list. I think that sounds like a great idea. So we'll be back live in a couple of weeks. All right, all that and more on the next Marvelicious Toys. Thank you for listening to this episode of Marvelicious Toys. There's even more Marvelicious content at our website, MarveliciousToys.com. You can see pictures of the products we discussed, find checklists for collectibles, and read articles on Marvel movies, comics, and collecting. It's all at MarveliciousToys.com. You can also help out our show by telling your friends to listen by posting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or in person. We would also greatly appreciate a five-star review written on iTunes. A link to our iTunes feed is at MarveliciousToys.com. We want your feedback. You can email us at show at MarveliciousToys.com or find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Find all those links at our website. If you also like Star Wars, Star Wars Collecting is covered at our other podcast, Star Wars Action News, which you can find at SWActionNews.com. Marvelicious Toys is produced and edited by Artie Carvalho. Associate produced by Jason Latham. Video editing by Barrett, Andrew, and Daryl. Graphic design by Justin. Photo editing by Jeff and Curtis. Announcements by Brock. If you want to hear reviews of every movie ever based on Marvel Comics, check out those reviews and hundreds more on the Now Playing Podcast at nowplayingpodcast.com. Marvel Comics and all of the Marvel Multiverse contains are the intellectual property of Marvel Entertainment Incorporated, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, and no infringement is intended. Marvelicious Toys is a Venganza Media production, copyright 2019, all rights reserved. And no part of this show may be reproduced, repurposed, or redistributed without the written permission of Venganza Media Incorporated.